Irish Football Fan TV. This is the final word show from all the League of Ireland games. I know we have uh, we've been kind of away in regards to the League of Ireland just with all the Ireland stuff and then the international break and everything like that. So we just kind of got a little bit hung up on that, but uh, we are back. Um, we are back every week from now on. But uh, Ryan, um, how was your how was your Friday night? It was good. It was wet because it was like lashing rain um, at UCD. But in terms of uh, the game itself, it was very, very good. I was yeah. very happy with the way it went. Obviously, didn't manage to get coverage in the end because the mic had a bit of an error. But uh, it was a good. Oh, these things happen. Uh, yeah, well, no, we, we, we'll, we'll come back to the, to the to the UCD game in yeah. a bit, which we also have highlights for. So stay tuned for that and uh, St Pat's uh, game against Dundalk as well. But the, the the game I'd like to cover first is uh, Cork um, and Shamrock Rovers. Obviously, it was three one to Shamrock Rovers. Um, a very, very, very good result if you're a Shamrock Rovers fan. I think if you're a Cork fan, you're very, very frustrated. Um, the first goal, you know, great bit of pressing. Um, this is after 20 minutes. A great bit of pressing. Ronald Finn, he then uh, gets the ball, gives it the ball, to back to Green, and then he whips in a nice ball, Kevin there at the back post, sticks it in 1-0. Um, and then you're kind of thinking, okay, well, you'd like to get a response from a Cork point of view. And to be fair, um, I think it was Tilly got fouled when he whipped in a nice ball. Yeah. And uh, Graham Cummins was offside. I couldn't really see from the angle. But uh, apparently he was offside and the goal was ruled out. It was a really, really good centre forwards goal. Um, I actually really wish it was, it was given, but sure. I couldn't see from the other angle whether it was off or not. I'm sure it was, if, if that's really flagged for, but you're going to have to give them the benefit of the doubt. Um, and then, yeah, uh, the, the, you know, the, the, just for me, Cork aren't showing enough. You know, so you thought after the, the Bowles game they were going to kick on and start going on a bit of a run. I know Rovers have been, you know, different gravy, especially since Jack Burns gone back into that, in the whole number 10 position. I think I think he's been brilliant there, and and, and himself and McIniff and Bolger all seem to have a really good understanding of what they're supposed to do. Like I know McIniff's playing a little bit deeper, but he's still getting in advanced positions and getting forward, and that kind of show with his second goal. I mean, he drops the shoulder and you know sells Dan Case. He's one of the best defenders in the league. I mean, there's no or there's a reason why John Caulfield went out, you know, and made him the man to get because he was brilliant at balls last season. Um, he, he goes past him, takes a strike, and when your look is in, um, you know those go in off off the defender's leg or whatever, and that's what happened. Wrong footed, Mike Nolte and goals, and it was it was two nil then. Um, but from from watching from watching it yourself, what what were you, what were you thinking? Um, yeah. You know, uh, do, do you think Cork should have shown more, or were Rovers that good? I don't know. I think that Cork played well. Don't get me wrong, but. It's not a result you expect from Cork. I think when you look at what Cork were, maybe not so much last season, but even two seasons ago, they were making um, Turners Cross a, a fortress, really. Very difficult to go there and come away with something and just made Rovers look... I don't I don't think they made them look like, you know, they walked the floor with them, but Rovers definitely went went down there with the intention to get three points and, and it showed in, in the way that they played. And I just don't think Cork showed enough to to be deserving of even a point in that game. Rovers are the better side and that's the end of it. As simple as that, really. Mm. I think they are lacking um, the fact that Dara O'Connor's been out injured as well. I think, you know, Doira, your mate. Um, but I think, you know, they are lacking him. He's, he's been, you know, one of their better players that they signed. A lot. They, they have had a lot of new players kind of come in and, and jail, but I thought he was been their biggest threat. And I think they've kind of been unlucky that he's out injured at the moment. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, they got to make the likes of Tilly and stuff like that really has to start stepping up. Um, and he's only on loan from Brighton for six months, but I mean, he's been there nearly two, or maybe it might be three yeah. now. Um, but on the stroke of half time, uh, Dan Casey redeems himself. Uh, awful. Well, it was a good bit of defending, first of all, from the corner, then the ball comes back in from McCormick, and then uh, there's just like <laughs> the two, two Rovers defenders collide into each other, and then Casey actually has really good reaction hmm. and sticks it in it was almost like a centre forwards reaction to be fair to him and you know he loves a goal against uh, Rovers being a Bowles player last season I think he scored maybe three 
uh, against them and really loves a goal against them and I'd, I'd say Rovers fans don't really like him at all but uh, he made up for his mistake then for, for the Mac and F goal yeah. in my opinion yeah, yeah, and yeah. then you're kind of going into half time they're thinking you know okay Cork might get back into this um, but then they just came back out in the second half and again Rovers dominated and you know, McAniff obviously gets the third goal, but for me it was all about that pass, that disguised pass from Jack Bryan. It was like I was saying it earlier on. It was just like something Sergio Busquets would do. It was it was beautiful because he looked like he was going to go up the line and then cuts in, yeah. and all of a sudden he bewildered everybody. And all of a sudden McAniff has all the space in the world, gets the shot off. I mean, you give someone with that, you know, his ability, time and space, he's going to punish you. Um, People were saying the keeper might have done better. I don't know. I, I've never played in goals, so you know I, I'm not going to be t- telling people that he should have done better. Or he shouldn't. It's, it's not my call. Uh, if I had a played in goal, maybe, or if we had a goalkeeper, you were a goalkeeper. Weren't you? I I claimed I was. Goalkeeper is one thing, but being able to save is another thing. You know, and I wasn't. Particularly Would you have saved it? Give me a few attempts. I might give it a shot. First time around, maybe not. Okay. But, yeah, after the tenth attempt, I might have. In that moment, no. But this guy's a professional footballer. Exactly, yes. And he's probably a good bit taller than me as well. Yeah. Probably has the reach. Well, look, for me, anyway, I, I thought it was all about the quality of the strike. And as I say, um, when your look is in, those shots go in. And he's top scorer now, five goals in the league. Yeah. And, you know, really, really starting to prove that he is uh, an adequate replacement for Graham Burke. Yeah. I mean, between himself and Jack Byrne, I think Rovers have proven now that they do have the best midfield in the league. Those two players have been phenomenal this season. Jack with the passes and Aaron with the finish. It's sort of well, as well as that. Though, I mean, Jack scored two last week, didn't he? Oh yeah, yeah. So Jack, well, yeah. He's, he's chipping in with goals as well. It's not just Jack who's playing the goals, and he's, he's getting some as well. Yeah, let's not forget Ronan Finn too. But um, definitely, I think those two between Jack and, and Aaron, they seem to have a connection or something between them. They seem to know exactly where they're going to be. You know, it's, Jack didn't even look up. He knew exactly where Aaron was. Aaron had enough space. He wasn't being closed down. I don't think it was the best defending from Cork to be honest for that for that third goal. But uh, Aaron takes full advantage regardless, and it's a great finish. Yeah, um, that's all we really have to kind of say on that. I mean, you know, last season you never would have been expecting, you know, Rovers to do that. But, you know, Cork have lost players, Rovers have added players. Yeah. But uh, Alex actually caught up with Aaron McIniff, which you can see. Here. Hi, Alex here from Irish Rovers Fan TV. I'm here with Aaron McIniff. Aaron, what are your thoughts on the game? All right, Alex. Uh, no, it was a, I thought it was a good game. Um, we knew it was going to be a tough task coming down here because Cork are a good side, obviously. Uh, but we came down with a game plan and we stuck to it and I thought we passed the ball really well. And uh, we defended when we had to defend. So uh, there was a good mix in there and just thankfully we, we came out with a three points. Obviously you're getting two goals tonight. Yeah. Uh, your tally's up to four or five now, I think. Five, eh? Five, yeah. <laughs> so uh, obviously um, that's giving you good confidence ahead of the next couple of games. No, it has. It's look. If you get goals it ov- and goals on winning games, it, it breeds confidence. But um, I think uh, all the boys in the change room, and since I've come down, you have to be level-headed enough to, uh, to just keep working hard because we're still early in the season. Uh, it's only the first round of games, and um, if you if you want to be successful, I think you have to have a base of hard work, and we'll just continue to do that. Like, but tonight, I'm obviously happy to get the two goals and. Uh, more importantly, to get the three points. You seem to have a great relationship with uh, Jack Bourne in the middle of the park. Yeah. How are things playing with him? No, he's, he's my mate. Like Jack, he's a great lad. Uh, we always have a bit of crack. And um, Since I've moved down, he would come over to the house and play FIFA and stuff. So I uh, get on well with Jack. And Look, he's, he's got a great football brain. He, he sees passes and takes up good positions. Uh, so it's just it's great to be playing beside a, a player like that, to be honest. And obviously Dundalk dropping points now means uh, Rovers are 10 points clear at the top of the table. Can you keep the momentum going? Well, I actually didn't know that there now until you said. Uh, I, I personally, I don't pay much attention to um, what all our teams are doing. Uh, I think you have to you have to focus on your own team and, and what you're doing and believe in what you're doing. And uh, we'll we'll continue to try to do that and um, we'll see where it takes us. Um, it's obviously been a decent start for us, but um, as I say, it's still early. Thanks, Aaron. Thank you very much. Huge thanks to, to Alex for that top man. Appreciate that. Um, obviously, Aaron McInef buzzing, top scorer in the league, and the team are flying at the top of the league. But uh, St. Pat's won, Dundalk nil. Dan Cleary own goal. But uh, there was a couple of chances before that. Obviously, Dan, Dan O'Kelly for uh, for Dundalk with the counter attack. Um, 
Jamie McGrath probably would have been arguing that he should have squared that ball. But uh, you can kind of see where, where Kelly was coming from. He pretty much made the chance. So he was within his rights to um, to have the shot. Uh, Kieran and, and Connor were down covering this game. And, you know, they they had said, you know, for a 1-0 game, it was it was a good 1-0 game. So it wasn't a, like it, And there was a decent enough crowd despite the weather and the fact that Liverpool were playing at the same time against Southampton. So that, that's good to, good to hear, I suppose. Um, but the Reese McCabe running down the, running down the wing, um, he kind of puts in a, you know, it wasn't, wasn't an amazing cross or anything like that. It, was just, it just seems to be like a normal, you know, a wishful ball. And I think it was Chris Forrest who was running in behind Cleary, but he was still a good bit away from him. And, you know, Gary Rogers was there as well. I think there was a serious mix up between the goalkeeper and the, and the defender. And he, whatever way he hits it, it's really weird looking. And, you know, next minute they're 1 0 down. I think it's just before half time. And, you know, going in, a surprise um, scoreline going into mm. the half time, you know. So, Absolutely, um, yeah. But Pats would obviously be delighted going into half time. Uh, were, you, were you surprised? I'm sure you checked the game, uh, the goals at half time. Yeah. You must have been thinking, what's going on? There? It was a bit, actually, considering, you know, uh, myself and yourself were at the uh, Pats and Dundalk game on the Monday. And yeah. well, I think we knew it would be a different game on, on Friday, but just that it was that different that Pats are winning um, by the goal to nil. And I remember I saw it on, on the Friday night and I thought, like, that that could be interesting. I think Dundalk are going to need it. I think I said to my mate at the time that Dundalk are going to need a good second half to come away with three points there. And I thought the best they can probably hope for is a point at this stage because I reckon Pats will go defensive, but I don't even think that's the way the game transpired well they, they came close to getting a point didn't they because Sean Murray had a, a lovely shot with the outside of his of his right foot and he hit it off the post it was lovely because Sean Gannon tried to whip in across and deflected off someone and then yeah. it just sat up beautifully for Murray and the form that he was in you were thinking that was going to go in yeah. but it just kind of clips the outside of the, bo- uh, the post just yeah. to uh, Brendan Clark's relief your mate Brendan and Kieran's. Um but yeah then I don't believe that there was too many chances then after till the, till the very end and Pat Hubens one on one with uh, Brendan Clark, and you know he he hits it wide when everyone else thought it was going in, but apparently went well wide. And you know unless himself and the players around him, like a John McRover, start chipping him with goals, you know, uh, Rovers are going to just keep chipping away. You know, yeah. and uh, they already have a few games in hand on them. Yeah. Obviously, if Dundalk win them, I think they, it's, the gap's only four points, but. I don't think they'll be worried yet, but they just need to start getting their shooting boots on big time, you know. And as I say, players need to kind of shoot out. They are missing some players, like as well. You know I mean, I think mean, Chris Shields was out, you know, McElhenney. Um, so they are missing some of their best Benson players well, too. Yeah. yeah, so some of their best players yeah. too. So you can't can't forget that at the same time. So you kind of have to take that into consideration too. But yeah. from a Pat's point of view, um, the lads were saying that Connor Clifford was was absolutely outstanding. Uh, Gary Shaw done fantastic uh, covering in for Mikey Drennan. To quote Connor, he said he ran his bollocks off. So there you have it. Um, and then uh, Reese McCabe as well. And, and Reese McCabe played, man yeah. the match. Yeah. So, uh, but Reese McCabe's like I remember Rob sitting here um, at, at the season preview. I think you were you were on that show, yeah, and was, he was yeah. uh, you know raving wax lyrical about McCabe saying they can't believe that no one was had even picked him up till like nearly the last two weeks or three weeks of the se- uh, preseason. And then he was signed from Sligo. Yeah. So it's a bit of a mad one that, that he wasn't picked up sooner. Um, Certainly strange to me. He's had a good season so far. Um, really good. He looks to be very, very important to that Pats team. Uh, between himself and Brandon Clark as well, he's had a very good season. So, um, yeah, I've been well impressed every time I've gone to see Pats because it's always those two, to me, that, that stand out. I think Chris Forrest has put in a few good shifts as well recently. Yeah, well, I think he looked like he got a knock on Monday uh, when he came off the bench. Um and I thought he was going to go back off, to be honest with you. Mm. He, he, oh, you know what he did? He kicked one of their players. I think it might have been Sean Gannon or um, uh, Dummington. It was, it was one of them. He kicked one of them and he actually injured himself. Yeah. He, they, they injured, he injured the two of them, but he injured himself in the process. He, came up and he, looked, yeah. he looked like he was like hobbling around mm-hmm. and they were trying to get that goal back. And it just wasn't happening for them. Um, that was obviously for, for the uh, EA Sports game. But... Um, so I was surprised to actually see him in- included for that game start. I thought he might have been out with, with a knock, you know. But I believe uh, Simon Madden and, and Ian Birmingham on either, you know, they were playing wing back and they were just getting high and forward. And the change of system, I think that's a real uh, win that St. Pat's needed. And, uh, uh, you know, 
a good look, the good bunch of lads down there, and you know, I have a few friends on the Pats team that are actually nice lads. So I'm delighted for them, just a kind of confidence boost to, uh, you know, because they, they've needed it. There's been games where I thought, you know, they've been kind of unlucky, but they were like that last season as well. And I was just like, you need, well, they need to start kicking on. Yeah. Um, and to be fair, they did. Uh, Kieran obviously caught up with uh, Brendan Clark after the match, so here's what he had to say. Well, welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. It's Kieran here with uh, no other than Brendan Clark after the game, one 0 win against uh, Dundalk, um, the champion. So, um, thoughts on the game, there, Brendan, after uh, that great result? Uh, I think we, the whole club, needed it. To be honest, the way the results have been going, um, but I think. We deserved it, you know. On the balance of play, I think we deserved it. It was, we went with three at the back, and you know, at times that can be a, that can be a five at the back with the two wingers, because they're going to put you under pressure, you know. But we had a game plan, and we stuck to it, and you know, there's a little bit of fortune in the goal, but that's kind of the fortune that we haven't been getting lately. You know? yeah. So listen, we took it, we defended really well for the rest of the game, and yeah, yeah. three points. And it's a. Uh, as you said there with the, with the two wing backs like uh, the seven two wing backs it's kind of what's in your favour in the second half because you kind of shut up shop yeah. in between and uh, even though they had a lot of the ball in the second half they didn't really create many two, two clear cut chances apart from the two at the end really yeah well I mean listen it, they're a good side you know they're a fantastic side Jeez, they've set the benchmark for everyone over the last few years you know so you know on a good pitch they're going to come they're going to play they're going to have a lot of possession so it was just about us we had something to hold on to and yeah. it was just about defending well sticking together and you know being that being that unit as a team and you know luckily we, we held on at the end and I think we got, we got a three points I think uh, I think the rain almost played it into your hands almost uh, tonight um, you know uh, Gannon then the right hand side uh, had a, had a Fairly hard time now with Ian Barron and then the left hand side, and then obviously Roy's coming in behind him. Um, you seem to get a lot of joy in the left hand side uh, tonight. Was that something that you said planned? Yeah, no, we've, before? So we, we, we Barmo and, and Simon, you know, they're two attacking fullbacks, so they can they can fit into that wing back role, you know. Uh, obviously, they're defenders as well, so, you know, they, they can defend 1v1 situations, and, you know, the way the swing was, the way the swing works, Barmo can go on and, and Lee can move across, and Simon talks around, we still have a back four, so, you know. Yeah, yeah. It is strength in numbers. Uh, yeah. We knew we'd need that tonight. Uh, it was kind of similar to the court game where we just kind of had to dig in after we had something to hold on to. You know, thankfully we did. There was a spell at the end of this, the first half. Obviously, when you had a lot of ball, you were getting really, really good chances. Uh, Connor Clifford had a very good chance after the environment. We won it back, cut it inside, and he did the overhead as well. Um, were you starting to worry at all at any stage where it was coming very close to halftime before you scored? Were you thinking, you know, we might get punished now for not uh, taking our chances? No. Uh... It's it's been tough because we haven't taken chances when we've we've been on top recently, so uh, and we've gone on to lose games. So uh, is it a worry? No, because you know I know the quality we have in the squad, and you know I think we created a lot of chances tonight where you know we've maybe been a little bit safe uh, at times in the past. So um, obviously the. You know, if, if we're pushing on to try and score, we, we can get done on the counter, which, you know, they, they've had a, a couple of counter attacks in the first half, especially. So we, we kind of, we mentioned that at half time and we kind of had to shut up shop then once, once kind of we were attacking as, as, a, as a back three, you know. So, um, yeah, no, I think we did it well. We defended well and, and got the clean sheet. How happy were you at the end when uh, Patrick Hope put it wide? <laughs> yeah, because you know he, he's true one on one, and I, yeah. I've come out with a big spread, and you're, you're waiting on it to hit you, and it doesn't hit you, so you check, and it's it's just it's gone well, boy. To be yeah, honest, yeah, so, yeah. Um, but we had plenty of bodies around in case it was on, on target, and that was the walk rate we we needed on the night, and you know it's, again it's a little bit of luck, and other night he could score, and you know we're, we're here after dropping two points. Mm -hmm. Well, it was a great night tonight. Um, he's duly deserved the win, mm -hmm. and uh, I really. Liked so, uh, thanks very much for your time. Yeah, no right problem. Okay. Fine. Keep thanks very keep much. Okay. Work. It's, uh, it's, it's great to have you know, guys like yourself from out in the league and you know, the clubs, I think, are doing a lot of work themselves. So, you know, fair play. Just thanks very much. No thanks very much. Bye. Bye. So, there you have it. Uh, Kieran there chatting to Brendan Clark. He's obviously delighted with the win and saying, you know, they needed it. So, there they have it. Uh, I also want to say a huge thanks to uh, St. Pat's Athletic for the use of their highlights and St. Pat's FC TV on uh, YouTube so make sure you go and subscribe to their YouTube channel and huge thanks to them and another game in which we've got highlights for us the game you were at uh, with UCD and yeah. Waterford so talk me through it yeah it was a great game uh, great to see UCD getting three points uh, and in some style as well uh, four goals to Waterford's one really really good result for UCD and exactly what they needed as well against a good side in Waterford who were surprisingly poor in the game the first goal uh, was with Gary O'Neill 
getting taken down in the box and he obviously took the penalty and the captain put it away. And it was actually Gary O'Neill's free kick that led to the second goal because his uh, free kick was a really good effort, really close to going in. And, uh, it hit the crossbar. It was, it was off the bar, but then Yusuf uh, Mahdi, or Yo-Yo, as the UCD fans call him, uh, put the ball into the back of the net and made it two. Now, Waterford did pull one back through Scott Twine. It was a good goal and really well worked, but it's from there on that UCD just really took advantage. Uh, Rich O'Farrell gets himself another goal. Uh, he's puts himself on the score sheet again, and uh, it, was a, it was a great goal as well. UCD just moving the ball very, very quickly and just opened up that Waterford defence. I thought that... I was very surprised by how poorly uh, Damon Delaney played. I don't think he played particularly well again, and it's disappointing to see because I think Waterford fans would have been expecting a lot more from him, uh, especially coming with such a, a big name that is Damon Delaney. Obviously, a man. Started who, found out over the weekend he was the last player, Irish player playing the uh, FA Cup final. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, played against Manchester United not so long ago, and and there he is conceding goals to UCD. It's it's disappointing to see, but uh, the final goal. UCD making it four. It was a sloppy mistake from the Waterford goalkeeper, but Sean McDonald uh, takes advantage and makes it four. So, again, a very surprising result, a much needed result for UCD. It's uh, their second win of the season. They hadn't had the best of starts. They've been unlucky, especially on the road. But a result against Finn Harps, a result against uh, Waterford now. They also got a draw recently as well. So, I think UCD maybe just starting to get into their, their groove a little bit more. We're starting to see the UCD of last season a little bit. Obviously, um, redented in the in the window. A few players going here and there, but they do look well. Richie O'Farrell's had a very very good season. I've seen him twice now. You've seen this in the last two games. You've been at UCD. They scored seven goals, haven't they? It's right. Yeah, exactly. So they're definitely getting the goals in as well. And um, you know, but they've uh, gone places and scored as well. I know they they scored against Dundalk, and there was other teams they yeah. scored against as no, well. Yeah, they have. No, they they start to look a lot more like a, a team that can play. I think against Finn Harps, they started to see maybe the. The, the start of that and but they just seem to be putting it into practice more and more they're repeating what they're getting right and they're getting three points from it against a very good Waterford side uh, it just it just made them look like a completely different team on the on the Friday so I was very impressed by UCD and it's another great result yeah absolutely I was surprised by Waterford you know I thought this season with the fact that they were in Europe and stuff like that and they made some decent signings that they were going to you know kick on from last season because they started last season far better than they did this season yeah. but that might be second season syndrome type of thing but I do think they do have the makings of a good squad and I think you know it's, it's not going to be like they're going to lose five games in a row type thing I think they will be looking to bounce back this week and I, I, I don't see the slump happening for too long I think that might be the, the kick up the arse that they need quite possibly yeah I think the fact that they can see four goals I think they know that they're just going to need to to reshape themselves defensively because I think at one stage they went to a three at the back and it just it looked completely off. Uh, Damien Delaney again just looked completely out of place and it was just so strange to see Damien uh, struggling because he's obviously he's a player who's come in with reputation. He struggled a bit at Cork last year. It's true, yeah. It's supposed to have a bit of a falling out with John Caulfield and whatever happened there, I'm not sure. But I thought, I genuinely thought he'd settle in at Waterford a little bit better than what he has done. but. Again, it might it might just be a, a case of he just needs to define himself again. I think he's what 30, 37 now, so you know, knocking on, but still a player that has a lot of experience. And I think if he finds himself um, possibly just getting a little bit more consistency, if Waterford maybe gets themselves a, a goal uh, more so as well, because I think they have been struggling uh, for goals this season as well. Well, not really, because Aaron Jones has been banging them in up until this week. Jones has been playing well. Um, and obviously they got a few goals against Cork as well, but I, I just I don't know. I think what it is with Waterford is that possibly on the road they're going to struggle more so than they will at the RSC. But I mean, hope, I'm I'm hopeful that Waterford will will turn this around as well because I was obviously very very happy with how well they've done last season. Yeah, well, I just want to say a huge thanks to uh, Waterford FC TV for for the highlights for that game. Huge thanks for that. Um, just on on regards, then uh, moving on to Derry and Finn Harps. Um, starting off with that awful red card, uh, a bit of a leg breaker, isn't it? Um, the, the fact that you know Call used to play as you know Finn Harris captain might have something to do with it, but DC gets sent off for you know horrific, horrific challenge. But mm. um, then you know there we started to obviously get into the game, and then the lap gets the goal. Eighty or is it Adrian? You call him. The commentators would call him AD. Okay. Uh, I think it's a bit of a, a nickname, like Yo-Yo at UCD. So right, we'll, yeah. stick, we'll stick with AD. 
But he, he, he scores. Um, he seems to have a lot of time to clear in the box and shoot, but uh, he gets the goal. And then, you know, from 15 minutes remaining, Boyle, former dairy man, gets on the score sheet. Um, great ball in, to be fair, and he took the goal well. And then um, Parkhouse with a, with a, you know, just one of them real centre forward headers that, you know, you love just seeing a number nine getting on the end of it. And, um, Parkhouse delivers the goals, it was a great finish. And then, when you're just when you're trying to get back into the game, and then the goalie just makes an absolute howler. Oh, he he basically costs his team a point um, because obviously they went down and got a penalty down the other end. But um, what well, I don't know what what he was thinking. Parkers gets in, probably the easiest goal he's ever going to score. I'd say so, yeah. But just swiping it there. Exactly. Yeah, I, th- I think he went for a big old hoof up the field. Um, Gets it what would you wrong. have done there as a, as a goalkeeping phenomenon? There we go again. Um, I would have absolutely booted up the field, yeah. Would you have taken a touch and then done it? No, I just I probably would have just hit it first time. Swipe but it. But I'm, I'm left footed, so I would have I would have caught it. He went with the right foot. You would have caught it? Yeah, I would have caught it. Would you use his miles outside his box? Well, what I'm saying is, I would have got the ball and hit it up the field. Oh, okay. With my left oh foot. you would have caught it with your yeah. foot. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. No, not ca- no, 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 not catch it. Oh, okay. That would be a foul. Yes, that's what I was thinking. Mm. I was like, well, you would have sent off and they would have scored. But anyway... Um, it probably would have been less embarrassing, to be honest. Yeah, well, look, uh, you know, Finn Harps again, scoring um, lots of goals. I kind of feel sorry for them in a sense. I mean, they seem to be putting in shifts, but getting let down by, by certain individuals. And, you know... The thing is about Finn Harps is that they're not exactly Didn't they get some players sent off against the uh, Shamrock Rovers, or was that just their manager, the game we were at? I know Ollie was sent to the stands, yeah. but I can't remember. But this is what I mean. But just individuals just letting them down. What, what the thing about Finn Harps is they're not exactly getting rolled over by teams. They're only mm. ever losing by the one or the two goals. You know they're in games. It's just that the reality is that teams are outscoring them every single time. Yeah, know? the Cork four three Garold Morrissey with two peaches that night. Oh, amazing, yeah. Um, yeah, but just from Derry's perspective, you know, they're just so. One week they're amazing, one week they're okay, and then one week they're losing heavily. So you just you never know what Derry's gonna turn, what what, what team's gonna turn up from a Derry perspective. Obviously a great result for them, um, another win under their belt. Um, Parkhouse getting two as well be, would be a big boost yeah, for them as well, you know. Yeah. Cause been, I mean, other than Owen Stokes, I wasn't really seeing where the goals were coming from there, and he's proven to be a pretty good signer for themselves. Yeah, as well. he has, he has. The thing about Derry is that they are quite inconsistent they're very difficult to predict they're sort of like the Irish weather in that you can walk outside and it's sunny and then the next five minutes it's raining it's the thing it about snowing as well yeah exactly so I, again for 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 dairy fans and from a dairy perspective you'd want them to be a bit more consistent maybe at home as well start picking up some wins at home because it's going to be difficult going away from home um, but it, again they're showing signs of what they were last season you would have hoped that they would have learned from their mistakes but they just don't seem to have done so. It's still early days, but I don't know. I don't see Derry doing as well as maybe some had thought they would. I hope they would. Yeah, but I could see them kind of pushing towards fourth. Not finishing fourth, but mm. towards fourth. Or up that kind of way. Um, Hopefully, yeah. Another another um, result then, the last of, of the Premier Games then, was uh, Bowes and, and Sligo. Yeah, it was very interesting with Sligo in that Ronan Murray was sent off in the 43rd minute. Um, a weird old sending off that one. Um, he supposedly was supposed to have dived, and then in his frustration at seeing the referee pulling out a yellow card, threw the ball at him, and then was sent off with a straight red. Well, um, that's an interesting one because now, um, if he's to get banned for a few games, that's huge for his, from his logo point of view. Is that he's 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 pretty vital for them. Uh, like he's a big player for them, key Absolutely, player for yeah. them, you know. And yeah. the fact that if if he gets banned for anything more for throwing at the ref, that would be that could be a consequence for them going forward, you know. Yeah, well, the reality is the FAI are going to have to take a look at it, but it certainly could be more than a three-match ban. Um, again, it's not the kind of thing you want to see in a game. Obviously, he felt that he was hard done by there, that the referee was wrong to give the yellow. But I mean, whatever about your opinion on the decision, stay on the pitch. Don't don't throw a ball at the referee. You're only asking for trouble there, and. And off he goes, Ronan Murray sent off and probably will miss more than three matches. It could be as much as five. Um, obviously, Sligo fans will be hopeful that's not the case, but we'll, we'll have to wait and see with that one. 
Either way, uh, Finity does score in the 48th minute and gives Wells the lead. It was like an overhead kick type of goal, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, it was something special anyways. And, and Dinny comes along and gets himself his fourth goal of the season after that. And Your mate? Yeah, my mate Dinny. Uh, countdown specialist makes it two uh, before Rob Cornwall is then sent off with a last man challenge. A bit of a cynical foul, that one. Um, well, I mean, do what you can to win the game type Yeah, team. yeah, it's, that. take one for the team. But it does bring Bowles back to second place, obviously eight points behind uh, Rovers, but obviously two games in hand as well, so they can close that gap. Um, but Bowles have been very, very good this season, uh, especially on the road as well. They've well, considering all the doubters had everything in placed against them, that they were going to be, you know, go down or they, they weren't going to do nowhere near as well, well as they uh, finished think, last yeah, season. I think I've got to hold my hand up and say that I was one of them because... Um, Based on what Bowes had done last season, I was very much expecting them to be sort of same old Bowes and sort of that for the mid-table position, hope to try and aim for fifth. I think I can't remember what I said on the preview, but I, I didn't have them that high. Mm -hmm. So at the minute, they're they're on course for Europe. It'd be great. They're to bringing see them. a bit, and to be fair, they're bringing a bit crowds home and away. Absolutely, so you have to yeah. Give them credit for that too. I think they've sold out at least twice anyway, um, which is great. They sell out a lot of home games, but as well as they do take a big crowd down to Sligo on, on Saturday too. Yeah, I don't know the, the whole attendance, but. Um, I've seen I was sent in videos um, from the game from the ball's end of Finnerty's goal and it just looked like there was a, a good number of people there considering it was a Saturday night and yeah. you know, it was down in Sligo um, but again well, uh, you can't you can't knock balls I don't have a lot to say about Sligo to be honest with you they just they're not showing a lot you know yeah. um, they're the only team I haven't seen this season actually of, yeah. the, of the first of the Premier Division so Hopefully we'll we'll catch them for a, a game soon enough. But um, from what I have seen at Sligo, it's not all that promising. It's a bit like Derry in that sort of on their day they can be good, yeah, but sometimes yeah, 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 you know, pretty similar. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Um, just in, in that in that regard, is that they just you know they, again they need to sort out their YouTube channel so they can see their highlights. Yeah, it'd be great um, if they did actually. Yeah, but they, again, yeah. Look, I mean, I'm delighted for Bose. Uh, you know. It's a good, useful squad there, mixed with some some uh, experience, Dinnies and Derek Pender and stuff like that. Um, but they they have been very good, and again, uh, another result on the road. They seem to like going on Sligo. Yeah. But uh, it's yeah, a good time it's, to be a Bose fan. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, that's kind of been it in regards to the the Premier Division. I was obviously at Shelburne and Bray the last day one nil. Um, Rock of Australia penalty. Uh, against yeah. your boys, Bray. We'll skip over that one, yeah. Yeah, but uh, no, look, uh, it was obviously a massive result for Shelburne to get back yeah, it is. Uh, amongst the well, back back to winning ways, yeah. and you know, especially with Bray have been flying, so they kind of needed to knock the wind out of their sails as well. But now, like it's 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 just been a mad first division, to be fair. I think Longford are now top of the league yeah. at the moment, so. Um, I didn't see any of the other games or, or goals or anything like that, so I kind of talk about. I'm hoping that maybe, like the other teams, that the clubs might decide to let us uh, show their highlights in the um, in our show, and we can speak about them that way then as well. Um, because we did actually cover four games this week, so three first division game, our three Premier Division games, and one first division game. So hopefully they see that we're putting in that effort, and they'll they'll. Uh, They'll return the favour by letting us put in the highlights. But um, that's been it in regards to our final word shop. Huge thanks, Ryan. Top stuff as always. No matter. Um, if you like this video, drop a like on the video. If you don't like it, drop a dislike and tell us why. Uh, and as always, don't forget to subscribe. Um, we're pushing now to get to 6K. So help us get there and we'll speak to you all soon. Thanks for watching.